Hi there, my name is Ryan Malloy. In this video, we are going to discuss how to find the remaining lengths of an isosceles trapezoid. Here, we are assuming that we already know the angle theta, the bottom base B1, and the top base B2. And what we're trying to solve is the height H and the other side S. Since this is an isosceles triangle and we have an axis of symmetry down the middle, we know that the opposite side is also s. So we are really only solving for two quantities. In order to do that, there is one other piece of information that will be helpful, and that is the length of this segment here. We'll call it l. It's fairly easy to show that l, or the length of l rather, is equal to b1 minus b2 over 2. So, now that we have theta and L, we can use trigonometry to find the other two sides of this right triangle. So, we have theta. We also know L. First question is, how do we solve for s? Well, simple trigonometry tells us that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side, or L, over the hypotenuse, s. From here, we can simply multiply both sides by s and divide both sides by cosine theta to arrive at an explicit formula for s. You see that s is equal to L over the cosine of theta. Good. And from here, if you want to solve extremely explicitly in terms of just the quantities that we started with, you can simply take in this value for L and plug it in here, which would give you b1 minus b2 over 2 times cosine of theta. Lastly, we need to solve for the height, h. From here, we can simply do this using the Pythagorean theorem. We recall that s squared is going to be equal to l squared plus h squared. From here, we can simply subtract l squared from both sides. We get s squared plus l squared, rather minus l squared, equals h squared. And then from here, we can take the square root of both sides to arrive at an explicit formula for h. And once again, you can simplify, simplify this further if you take this formula for L and plug it in here, which might not look like simplification because then you have to square this term, so we'll leave it in this form for now, which is the nicest looking. But here we've shown how you can take one angle and the two bases of an isosceles triangle, or trapezoid rather, and use that information to determine the lengths of the remaining sides and the height. My name is Ryan Malloy, and we just discussed how to find the remaining lengths of an isosceles trapezoid.